1963. We know through painful experience that freedom is never voluntarily given by the oppressed. It must be demanded by the oppressed. Frankly, I have yet to engage in a direct action campaign that was well-timed in the view of those who have not suffered unduly from the disease of segregation. For years now, I have heard the words, wait. It rings in the ear of every Negro with piercing familiarity. This wait has almost meant never. We must come to see with our distinguished jurists that justice too long delayed is justice denied. We have waited for more than 340 years for our constitutionally and God-given rights. The nation of Asia, Africa are moving at jet-like speed towards gaining political independence. But we still creep at a horse and buggy's pace towards gaining a cup of coffee at a lunch counter. Perhaps it is easy for those who have never felt the stinging darts of segregation to say, wait. But when you have the seen vicious mobs lynch your mothers and fathers at will and drown your sisters and brothers at whim, when you have seen hate-filled police curse, kick, and even kill your black brothers and sisters, when you see the vast majority of 20 million Negro brothers smothering in an airtight cage of poverty in the midst of an affluent society, when you suddenly find your tongue twisted and your speech stammering as you seek to explain to your six-year-old daughter why she still can't go to the public amusement park that has just been advertised on television, and see tears welling up in the eyes when she is told that the fun town is closed to colored children. And to see ominous clouds of inferiority begin to form in her little mental sky. And to see her beginning to distort her personality by developing an unconscious bitterness towards white people. When you have to concoct an answer for a five-year-old son who is asking, Daddy, why do white people treat colored people so mean? When you take a cross-country drive and you find it necessary to sleep night after night in an uncomfortable corner of your automobile because no motel will accept you. When you are humil humiliated day in and out by the nagging signs reading color and white, when the first, your first name becomes nigger and the middle name becomes boy, however old you are, and your last name becomes John, and your wife and mother are never given the respect title of missus, when you are harried by day and haunted by night by the fact that you are a Negro constantly living at the tiptoe stance, never quite knowing what to expect next, and are played with inner fears and out outer resentments when you are forever fighting a degenerating sense of nobodiness, then you will understand why we find it difficult to wait. There comes a time when the cup of endurance runneth over and men are no longer willing to plunge into the abyss of despair. I hope, sirs, you can understand our legitimate and unavoidable impatience. Excerpt. Oppressed people cannot remain oppressed forever. The yearning for freedom eventually manifests itself. And that is what has happened to the American Negro. Something within has reminded him of his birthright of freedom and something without <laughs> has reminded him that he can be gained consciously or unconsciously. He is caught up by the zeitgeist with his black brothers of Africa, his brown and yellow brothers of Asia, South America, and the Caribbean. The United States Negro is moving with a sense of great urgency towards the promised land of racial justice. And one recognizes this vital urge that has engulfed the Negro community. One should readily understand why public demonstrations are taking 
prayers. <coughs> Excellent. April 1963, letter from a Birmingham prison. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. 